When I was a child, I was obsessed by martial arts movies. The one with Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee, Jean-Claude Van Damme. I wanted to become like that. I wanted to fight the injustices with the martial arts. I wanted to go to China to train with the Sifu, with the real Sifu, the one of the movies with Longbeard, and stay with him for years to become the best fighter ever. But it never happened. I never went to China and then never trained with the Sifu. But there is one guy that actually did it and changed his entire life. I didn't want to disturb you. Oh, hi, hi. Hey, Jay. All good? Yeah, good, all good. I couldn't imagine a place as perfect as this one. It's like being in a movie. Yeah, it's a quite, it's a really nice place to be. You came to China 10 years ago mm -hmm. from USA. Yeah. Without knowing anything no. <laughs> about Kung Fu. Fresh start. You left home and you went here to train for five year, years. That was my straight. goal, yeah. yeah. I came here in 2010, yeah. but I knew about the school in 2009, 2008, mm -hmm. the end of 2008. And I found the program and I was like, this is what I want to do. I started telling people, oh, I'm thinking about this. And a lot of people didn't believe me. Mm. That was kind of more motivation. Like, I really want to do this, trust me. And so I actually was preparing for about a year, year and a quarter or so, before I came here working two jobs every day. I used to work seven to 2.30 and three to 11 every day and just save up everything I could because I was like, I need to take the chance to come here. Master Yen, my Sifu, now at then was starting the first uh, traditional class five-year living program for foreigners only. So you were the first foreigner? And probably the last now. The next generation of students to become coaches. Yeah. And we're the first ever foreigners taught that way. I don't think it'll happen again. I think we were the first and I think it's probably the last time it'll happen. The thing that surprised me is that you didn't have any clue, let's say, about martial arts. Right, right, right. I think sometimes that helps. One of the types of students to teach is the one who's starting fresh, doesn't have any history. You don't have to unlearn anything. Mm. You don't have any bad habits. You don't have any habits. I do think that's, that was a good benefit, actually. At that time, my mindset was pretty much like, you know, you're coming out of school, you're looking for what you want to do with your life. I, I tried to think about it very logically when I was 18, 19 years old. Thinking about like, whatever I want to do, I know I want to be in charge of one thing. I want to be in charge of my own health. This is one of the main things that set me off on like the journey to find Wudang, you could say. Um, and that was like, I wanted to find a way to be healthy, to be in charge of that as I age. Not just like be fit and be like athletic, but to be able to have some longevity with that. So I really thought about just, just as like a fitness goal in the beginning. Um, very superficial, like I see the, the masters of Kung Fu and you see them practicing and you think, oh, they know something, you know. Not only are they very physically healthy, but their life seems to be a better quality. So that was a real driving force for me. Of course, the popularity with martial arts movies and film, and there's always this interplay. Yeah. Um, but a big degree was for me was health cultivation. Okay. And Taoism is very centered around that. You weren't thinking about self-defense. No, I mean, there's lots of places to study that. Like you can join the military, you can join a UFC school, you can join a boxing club. Like there's lots of this, but for me, it doesn't have the like, long-term sustainability. Mm -hmm. And, it, and it, it can be very deep. The practitioners can be very, uh, philosophical when they practice for a long time but the the health aspect is sometimes ignored I know a lot of people who weightlift I know a lot of people who bodybuild I know a lot of people who box competitively and fight and they have a lot of injuries because that's part of the training the main focus should be on your body first and your emotions your stability you found what you were looking for or? and more and more like for me like I said just fitness in the beginning yeah that's really easy you know six months I could do full splits I can do things that I didn't think were possible for my body type at yeah. that time. That was very quick. But then every like all the layers of Wudang, like you say, oh, we have the music, we have the calligraphy, yeah. with these different things. There's like another level. It's like another layer, another layer. It just feels that 
everything you discover that's new, it feels like a piece that you you always had, like a piece of you that you always had. You mm -hmm. just didn't understand it. And so the more deeper you go in the practice, the more you understand. The Wudang style is more a comprehensive uh, right. style, a comprehensive uh, way of living. Right, yeah. yeah? So, so Wudang, like when we come here, we don't just focus on combat. We do have fighting class in the traditional school. But we also spend a lot of time doing meditation. We spend a lot of time doing Qigong, a lot of stretching, a lot of stamina. Not just endurance and music, strength. music, uh, calligraphy, wow. a little bit of theory and Taoist culture. Okay. We we study chanting. We do like the Taoist uh, singing. We do a lot of this stuff too. Every day. Yeah, we train every day, eight hours a day. I read a little bit about Wudang style. Of course, yeah, yeah. And I read that in China there are two main styles. Mm -hmm. One is the Shaolin style, yes. and one is the Wudang style. Yeah. Those are the main kung fu okay, style yes, in China. Yes. You could classify them as mainly these two are the most popular or everything else is uh, variations of those. Mm -hmm. You could say that. There are other styles, but the main two would be Shaolin, which would be north, and yeah. Wudang, which would be south. They say the, the north has the punches and the south has the kicks. Okay. So there's a little bit of distinction, but uh, yeah, the more Buddhist for, for Shaolin and more Taoist for Wudang. Why you have long hair? Everything has like a metaphor for Taoist like philosophy. So the long hair represents antithesis to Shaolin, you know, the clean cut, bald head. We have the complete opposite. And then for Wudang, we let the hair grow because Wudang is about following nature. Nature wants to grow, so you let it grow. Then for the actual hairstyle, there's a lot of symbolism. Uh, one is you, you have these two, two bands. So you take, when you make the hair, you split it in a two, yeah. and then you wrap it around the head. And this is like symbolizing yin and yang, like the balance of yin, like the taiji symbol. Uniform, just casual clothes, loose fitting, traditional like kung fu outfit. Yeah, everything has to be loose. Everything has to be loose. We do a lot of long flexible, kicks more. and flexible movement. Okay. Shoes? Shoes, can... just comfortable. These are like, they have a style like this. These are boots for winter. Blacks and blues and whites will be the main tr okay. three traditional colors. And the flow, the flow can be also a stick, a, a weapon. Yeah, this sometimes you have like, they do have weapon forms with a flute. I wouldn't hit anybody with this because I like it too much. <laughs> um, but you could. But you, yeah, some, sometimes they do. You can substitute it for the sword, which is like the Wudang special weapon. You feel changed by when you came here? I do feel more like myself. I don't know, if, I don't think I've changed, but obviously I look different. I changed my clothes, my hairstyle. Like, I'm different on the outside, yeah. but I feel like I'm just more at peace with myself. Jake, I came here till China also mm -hmm. because I want to ask you 10 questions about happiness. Yeah, of course. Because I'm interviewing people from all over the world with different backgrounds and I found yours very, very interesting because you change your life to find more awareness about yourself. So I think that you could give me some good suggestion about my formula of happiness. I can try, I hope so. Yeah? Yeah, come. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Cool, so 10 questions about happiness. Okay, sure. First one. What's your first thought when you wake up? Uh, for me, I have to say, in general, the first thing I think about is what am I doing today? Like, what's next? What's my plan? Um, I'm a very goal-oriented, like I make a to-do list every day. Every day? Every day. In and, the morning uh, or in the I, uh, Actually, the night before. I'll, I do it too. Yeah, I make it night before I make my to-do list. And that way, when I, go, when I wake up in the morning, I'm already like in my head. I don't need to look at the list, but I have like an order. Uh, we wake up here for training. I wake up about a little before 5.30, get ready, get dressed, get set up, go outside, start my hour Qigong class. Um, so right from the morning, I'm, I'm pretty focused, like what's my, what's my goal for today? What am I trying to get done? I'm trying to stay motivated. I have a mantra, like yeah, I, have a, yeah. I, have a word, I have a sentence that I still, I repeat every day to remind me to, to do the to-do list every night. Right. It's you create your future the day yeah. before, Yeah. you know, because if you are organized, you can be you can be more productive the next day. Right. So I'm My, glad. Mine, I'm is, glad. Uh, mine is, it's not, it's not because you can't, it's because you won't. Yeah. So it's, like, it's not because you can't do it. You're able to do it. It's just you won't do it. Mm -hmm. So do it. So push yourself. Yeah. This is yeah, mine. Yeah. The same, very similar. Organization is, uh, is yes, key. Yes, always, key. always. What is the small thing that always makes you smile? For me, I go to my class and I teach somebody and they have a lot of energy to learn. And now I have energy. So I love that experience like of that that kind of sharing mentality of like pushing each other. For me, I enjoy this a lot. What are the three most beautiful things in the world for you? Uh, my daughter, my wife, my mom. Easy. <laughs> easy. easy, easy, easy. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, no, they're my support. My daughter is the reason I do everything I do. My wife is like the one who pushes me to actually do it. Mm. <laughs> and my mom is the one who raised me to be who I can be. 
what's the event that completely changed your life? Uh, there was a point before I came here where it was like, you know, you come out of high school, you come out of college, you have a lot of ideas. You want to travel the world, you want to find yourself, you want to, you know, run to the Amazon, lots of things, you know. Um, you want to be a musician, you know, there was this dream. Um, but I think at some point, I don't really remember the exact moment, but I remember thinking like, oh, what if, what if, what if this, what if that, you know. And eventually I just said, you know, what if now? Like, what if now I just do something? Like, mm -hmm. stop thinking about, like, this dream and just uh, try to do something. And that kind of pushed me to try something. What I ended up trying was coming here. So this really changed my life once I did it. But I'd say even before that, I was looking for change. What did you need to change in yourself? Um, my direction. Like, for, for, for me in the Midwest, there's a lot of people who grow up and just kind of inherit their belief. Yeah. They inherit their health. They inherit their lifestyle, their job even. Um, and I, I, I didn't feel like, I don't think that's like a trap. I think there's a lot of people who find value in that. But for me, I just didn't see, I didn't see happiness in that for me. And I, I didn't know where I would find it. I didn't know where I was looking for. I just knew I was looking. <laughs> um, I wanted to change, like in general. And I wanted to experience something different. What's your biggest fear? Stagnation. I'd say stagnation. Like I'm, I'm more of a concept, I guess. Like I'm, I'm more afraid. Of, I love to grow. I love to learn. I love to experience things. I'm more afraid of having that taken away. Like, not having the opportunity to experience something new. Like, I'm really afraid of a desk job. I would say. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm, I really love this lifestyle, and I'm only afraid of losing that. Now that you pull this uh, this out, I would ask you, what does dying mean to you? Oh, okay. Is that one of the ten? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can't really experience what we have here, like in this life, without understanding that this is absolute, real, tangible. Absolute death is absolutely nothing. Absolute nothing, like void. You know. So for that, it's 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 uncomprehensible because it's absolutely nothing. So it's like a like a black screen, you know. It's just like, so you think that there is nothing more after that? I, I I don't know what I believe. This is still a big question for me. Um, Taoism, there are uh, Buddhist influences about uh, reincarnation. Yeah. There are these practices, these philosophies, but I think that that kind of deprives you of the value of this life because you're looking for the next one. You know, you're like, oh, don't worry about it. The next time I'll get it. Um, for me personally. Um, this is where I differ and I think that to really value this life you have to understand that this is the one you have um, I don't necessarily think that there's second chances and I do to some degree think that you know energy recycles so maybe re maybe you do live another life but it would be another life it wouldn't be this life so it's still not the same it's the death of this life so I think that to really appreciate life, you have to understand that it will finish. This is the last question, but I want to okay. rephrase it for you. Okay, yeah. What is the recipe of happiness for you after 10 years here in China? There's no secret ingredient besides yourself, you know? And when you, have to, you have to adjust yourself inside to allow yourself to be happy, I think is more appropriate sometimes. Because I think a lot of times people distract themselves from their happiness they externalize their happiness. And they say, oh, my happiness is here. If I have that thing, I will be happy. But I feel like it's from inside. By challenging yourself, by living through hard times, you understand the, the, the good times. You appreciate the quality of life. And I think sometimes people miss that and they, they think that all oh, the, the bad things that happen in your life are bad. They can be, but it's perspective. You can, you can, choose to allow them to motivate you. So to sum it up, happiness is? I mean, happiness is suffering. I don't suffering. Know. <laughs> happiness is suffering. No. <laughs> uh, I mean, no, hap happiness is, is, is a life tempered with challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, you need, some, you need some challenge. I think you need some experience in your life. Absolutely. And then you can, you, can, you can understand you're already happy. You, know? you already can be happy. Yeah. You know, I, I, I noted you, I, I agree with you because I'm challenging, I'm trying to challenge myself every day, right, exactly. every year. I'm scared to travel around the world because, you know, it's not a, I don't know what is going to happen after. Yeah. 
but I know that after this fear, there is satisfaction. After right. this fear, there is happiness. During the, the process to reach satisfaction, there is happiness. So that's why I, I really deeply agree with you with, uh, with this uh, recipe of happiness. Yeah. So thank you very much, Jake. It was you, a pleasure you. meeting yeah, you. Huh? Been really nice meeting you too. Really. Um, are you on your trips? Are you going on more voyages after this? Do you have yeah. time for another day? It depends. Would you? Would you like perform? to join us at the school? We have a we have a performance tomorrow where the school gets together. We perform for Master Yuan. You can as long as they don't have maybe perform? you can meet you can meet Master Yuan. It'll be really nice. Oh wow! Yeah, it'll be an honor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what time is the performance? Um, well, we got to get up at six thirty, and then we're gonna get ready, have breakfast, and then we head over there a little bit before eight. Sure, I yeah. love I love waking up at six thirty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll be good. It'll be good. Yeah, oh, six thirty is okay. I normally wake up five thirty. It's okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> let's do it. Let's okay, do okay, it. yeah. Mamma mia, it's so cold in this room. Tonight I'm sleeping in the dormitory of the academy where Jake is uh, training, and he's teaching, and it's really, really cold. So tonight I have to sleep like that with the gloves too. Good night.